there are 2.5 billion in the planet that actually do not have electricity. Just think about that. You wake up in the morning, you have no electricity. The access to the first few watts is crucial to development. One of the motivations for our project is that of developing cheap solar materials, organic, that are flexible and lightweight, and that can, mount, can be mounted on rooftops and coupled to batteries in such a way that we can actually collect the energy to use it for these small applications. In organic photovoltaics, uh, uh, absorb sunlight by creating localized excitations in, for example, a donor or an acceptor layer that diffuse slowly by swapping uh, uh, mechanisms to an interface where the electron and hole dissociate and close, eventually close the circuit by, by the mobility of the hole and the electron to the, to the electron. The Clean Energy Project is a theory, computation, experiment and grid computing effort that tries to solve this problem of generating a high efficiency organic photovoltaic by guiding experimental synthesis by a massive search of candidate materials. The motivation of, of us to write this perspective is to actually give people an overview of all the different layers and all the complexity of the Clean Energy Project before we actually start publishing specific papers on specific issues. In order to start, we needed molecular motifs that could be used in organic photovoltaics. As one of the original team members in the Clean Energy Project, I worked on doing some molecular dynamics calculations to look at how these molecules interact with each other over time in the space of the solar cell. Uh, my contribution is um, uh, involved the molecular, molecular generation scheme, although it's not based on the idea calibration. My role in the Clean Energy Project was to essentially gather data, gather experimental data for the electronic properties of all the molecules we looked at. One of our most exciting results is uh, generating a large library for donor molecules. Then there is a, the, the problem of actually selecting the molecules, the problem of selecting those computations you want to run. So we got a molecular library of 2.7 million molecules, and from that we need to send the library to the people that work in the grid. The way this works is that any interested individual from any part of the world can download what is essentially an IBM screensaver onto his personal computer. When his computer is not in use, the screensaver activates and begins running calculations for our project using unused processing power on his own computer. The collaboration with IBM allows us to perform many, many quantum chemical calculations in the order of right now uh, 35 million. Uh, the first principle in typical uh, characterization of potential candidate structures, and I uh, hope to come up with suitable molecules for the next generation of uh, plastic solar cells. The challenge in organic photovoltaics is coming up with materials that actually have long lifetimes, right absorption properties, um, and, and that are actually cheap to manufacture and have high efficiencies. One of the big goals of our project is to actually find out a material that has not been synthesized or has not even been conceived that has efficiencies that can compete with silicon. Chemists really know how to house and make cheap uh, plastics, and plastics themselves have very interesting uh, material properties. Combine those two, uh, it's really the, uh, the way to go in order to get um, cheap materials in the future. My role in the project has been trying to create a database application that can store and meaningfully present this data. I was in charge of the first chemical informatics approach to deal with our huge set of molecules. I'm currently using chemical informatics methods to figure out which molecules will be useful. And these methods are similar to the ones used in uh, the pharmaceutical industry, and in the end they are connected also to the machine learning methods that are useful in other areas of science. I think I project is applying machine learning techniques to the data that the Clean Energy Project collects uh, to predict what molecules are good candidates for organic photovoltaics. Everybody that is watching this video has a moral responsibility. You have to go to cleanenergy.harvard.edu, again, cleanenergy.harvard.edu, click download and install this thing in your computer. Every time you go grab a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, take a stroll in a beautiful garden like this one, you can actually help the planet by actually computing a molecule. Every 12 hours of idle computer time in your computer that will actually not interrupt you when you're checking the web or typing your Word document will actually give us a new molecule. 
The computation themselves is done on hardware which already exists. Uh, we have merely to optimize the utilization of uh, this hardware. And everyone can contribute. And if you think about how much time your computer isn't doing anything useful, and the money you spend in, in getting uh, this piece of uh, sophisticated hardware, it is kind of a shame to let all this um, go to waste. So if you are watching this video on the internet, now you know what to do. After this, click on Clean Energy to cover the video and download this thing right now.